All right, so right now I have my AC on, or the heater on, and it's pulling 2,254 watts right now using 9.90 amps, as y'all can see. It's temporarily hooked up, so don't, don't beat me up in the comments now. I'm just running the test, and I have these on these Chevy Volt batteries right here, which is 2468 kilowatts. I want to see how long that's going to run. But I think when I cut it on, my battery voltage was sitting at 55.4. So we're bringing in 367 watts. And right now, the voltage is at 51.5. 7.2 amps coming out of the batteries. So I'm going to keep you all posted and updated on if the watts going to go up or if the watts going to go down. Let me show y'all what the uh, heater is on. I just want to show y'all that. As y'all can see, there's more heat too. So it's on, it's blowing heat. And I'll hit y'all, I mean, I'll shoot another video. In a later video, y'all will see how long that it actually ran before it actually died out on. All right, catch y'all next week. Okay, I'm back with the video of the heater on. I got the heat on. It's pulling 23, 2,318 2, watts coming out right now. That's the fans on. That's why it's pretty loud. And we're sitting at 47.4. You know, but this this 2,000 watts, 3,000 watts will drain that battery fast. It's an 8 kilowatt battery, the Chevy Volt. But it will drain it fast because we are bringing 2,000 watts. You know, at first it was 3,000. Now it's kind of going down too, you know, because uh, the propane went out in my, on my fireplace, so I gotta go switch the tank. And then it got a little cold in the house. So the heater is working extra hard trying to keep this house warm. And that's why you know, it's, it drained pretty quick like that. But we got 450 some watts coming in. If y'all can see that. So, 8 kilowatts doing pretty good. It's only been like an hour and a half, I believe. What time is it now? I do what time it go out. It's, um, it's 10.50. It's 10.50, and now right now it's bringing in, if you can see, 1,500 watts. So, it's it probably caught temp temperature right now. And the watts is going down. And that's running a heater. This is a 15 kilowatt inverter right here. 15 kilowatt, 15,000 kilowatts right there. So that's a big baby right there. Big, big inverter to hold that, that big surge, you know. So, of course, I need more panels. If I could bring in 3,000 watts, then of course, my battery voltage will still be sitting at like 55 or 54 but you know i only got like six panels hooked up to uh, this system right here so keep that in mind it, it can run it if i was bringing in a bunch of solar it'll definitely run it and keep those batteries topped off like i said it's the chevy Volt batteries down here is only eight kilowatt hours that's all that battery has and if you want to take a look over here at the life power batteries right here the 20 kilowatt hour battery it you know it, it never goes below 80 percent unless you know we have some cloudy and rainy days but man it's this been working perfect i am going to purchase that another battery though put it at 25 kilowatt hours definitely going to do that <clears throat> i mean y'all y'all you know take from me and the system that i'm building like i'm telling you once they already took my generator, I haven't used the generator at all. These, this is keeping my house running forever. Even throughout the rainy days that came. We had a few, a bunch of rainy days. I got low down to like 50, 40%. But hey, brought it right back up. And keep in mind, these batteries are made to come down to 0% uh, and bring them all the way back up to 100. These are Life PO4 batteries. So... And the MPP solar inverter 
you know, that 5K inverter, I, you know, two would be lovely to put me at 10K, but this, man, this is a beast. This has, I have no problem with this inverter. So I would recommend this inverter right here. It's about four, 13, $1,400. And with 20 kilowatts, I spun about $7,000. So with a $10,000 budget, and I say, no, let's just say 12, because you have to get the uh, solar panels, the wires, and the inverter. I mean, the uh, charge controller. Well, no, I'm sorry. This one have a charge control on it, so you don't need that. So the wires, the inverter, and the batteries. A good $12,000. If you spend a good $12,000, this will last you between 10 to 15 years you do the map on how much you pay monthly and you add it times 15 on the light bill how much you pay monthly on your light bill you add it times 15 and you ask yourself would this be a great investment because a lot of people look at the upfront cost cost they like ten thousand dollars oh that's a lot of money i might as well just pay my light bill yeah i heard that before but what happens when the light company say well, the power going to be out for a week. You lose all your food. You have to go spend money on generators. Think about it, man. Gas for generators. Think about that. You can do it. Even if you don't go off grid completely. This is a hybrid system. You can have somebody, an electrician, come in. You can buy this whole system right here and cut your bill down dramatically. And not only cut your bill down dramatically, even if the lights go out, you still have this right here to run your house it'll cut right on even with the grid hooked up to it so trust me y'all can go off grid you can you can do it you can go hybrid buy this inverter buy these batteries buy wires and solar panels you don't have to buy brand new solar panels go get some used solar panels and have somebody hook it up as a hybrid system and this input right here AC input, you're gonna run the grid in there and you're gonna come out into your breaker box with the AC output. And and this system right here, and like I say, let's say the lights didn't come on for a week. You still have power because you have a battery backup hybrid system. So come on guys, off grid or on grid or doing hybrid. This system is perfect. You still can run your house and run everything without worrying about the lights being out for a week and stuff. All right, let's see. Fans kick back on. We're sitting at 47.1. Let's see what we're bringing in over here. All right, it's back up to 2383. Well, yeah, so 2389, 86, whatever. 10 amps. They see unit is for the 10 hours. All right, so I'll catch y'all in the next video when it actually uh, drain the battery all the way down. All right, I am the Texas operator. All right, guys, so we're at 55.3. Bringing in 499 on the watt side. And it's starting to beat. Draining the seven. I mean, the eight kilowatt battery. We're sitting at 25, 27 on the watts, 11 amps coming out the batteries. So, you know, of course, seven kilowatts not enough to hold that. Well, maybe these batteries, they are a little old. I don't know what, what it is, but the real test would be on the 17.5 Nissan Leaf batteries. When I run that heater and see how long it'll last, see how long it'll hold that. AC unit, you know, before it reaches temperature. That's a three ton unit now, so it should be able to cool the whole house down in about four hours. You know, so if it can run for four hours and then kick off and then come on and kick off, then I'm sure we can have a cycle. But right now, eight kilowatts battery is only gonna last about an hour and a half or maybe two hours. I can't really remember the time I started, but like I say, it can last a little bit longer because 40, I think I got it at 42 is when the battery should drain, but the inverter is starting to beat and tell me that, hey, you need choice these batteries. You bringing that 2,500, you taking out 2,500 watts out of the batteries and I ain't got that much voltage left in me is what it's telling me. If I had, like I said, if I had 2,000, or let's say if I had 3,000 watts coming in, if that's bringing out, if that's take, if the AC 
unit is using 2500 and I had three, then it would hold the battery voltage. It'll use the solar. It'll use that 2500 out of the solar and then put 500 back into the batteries. Keep it, keeping the batteries topped off. That's how that work. And I'm gonna show y'all that it, you can run, you know, these things off grid. I just have to hook up my solar. Once I get my solar hooked up, that I already got the solar panels and stuff, I just gotta build a ground mount. That's about it. And then I'll show y'all how to completely, successfully complete running an AC off grid. All right, y'all. So I'll see y'all in my next videos. I am the Texas off grid guy.